On a spring day at Boston University, the Frederick S. Pardee Center for the Study of the Longer Range Future is teaching full-grown adults to play games. <laughs> it may not look like they're wrestling with complex issues related to climate change, like floods, drought, and starvation, but they are. They're learning how games can help people become better equipped to solve complex problems in an uncertain world. What we're doing is creating games that capture the essence of a system where people live in nature and there can be trouble. There can be too much rain, too little rain, uh, extreme storms, sea level rise. And then we ask people to make decisions. And in the games, those decisions have consequences. And in that exploration of possibilities comes very deep learning that is owned by the person who plays. I'm an undergraduate over here at BU. I study international relations in Japanese. And then outside of school, I just happened to uh, run an independent video game studio called Urban Electronics. And that's kind of why I was uh, drawn here to come to the Games for New Climate session. Looking forward to interacting with a lot of new people in sort of a different, uh, different school of thought that I'm used to. And I think the point is to make it maybe a little more fun so that it's more accessible to people instead of being so deadly serious. First of all, the game is a simplified representation of reality. It is not reality. We cannot capture reality in a 40 minute long game. There's also going to be losers. In the first game, players form communities and are given two seeds to start. They decide whether to plant crops that are well suited to heavy rains or crops that are more drought tolerant. So if any of you finds yourself in a situation where you have to pay a bean and you don't have a bean, that means you're hungry. How do you deal with hunger? You migrate. You go to the shanty town. This thing is not a die. It is the probability distribution function of precipitation based on the historical record. The community discusses a planting strategy, but each player makes an individual decision. If they plan correctly, they get more beans. If the weather doesn't cooperate, they have to pay. There we go. No kicking. No problem. Two for you, two for you. Two for you. <laughs> there we go. This is rain, man. Really rain. <laughs> <laughs> Drought. What that means is that these guys are protected. Jared will give them two each. Everybody else has to pay four. And if you don't have four, you're out. I didn't call it here. So four, 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 and four. Very good. I wanted to be protected. And it turns out that the die rolled, uh, rolled a one, so I, was, I didn't have enough beans to pay for my strategy. I was given some beans, and I planted them in the ground, and I grew some more beans, and then I planted them some more, and I grew some more, and then all of a sudden a flood hit, and I died. So, uh, well, I was washed away to a local uh, slum town and had been subsisting off of leftover banana peels and whatnot. We have also played games with subsistence farmers, with shantytown dwellers, with uh, fishing villages in the developing world. I have played games in no less than 20 countries in Africa, Latin America, Caribbean, Asia, very often in places where people are really on the edge of survival. In this game, people decide whether to invest in protection against disease-bearing mosquitoes or in programs to eradicate them. You are wearing a blue necklace. In this game, you are a human. And those wearing the red necklaces, you'll each be mosquitoes. I think we should attack first. I think we, we have more lives than they do. Two, one, go. Okay. So let's see. You have been killed, so you give me, you give me eight health. Humans, you choose which one of the mosquitoes you want out of the game? Jim. <laughs> okay, so I just got done playing uh, Humans vs. Mosquitoes. This game has a very simple mechanic. We, we would learn the game in about like three minutes. And uh, because of that, dealing with individuals catching malaria or just the issue of eradicating mosquitoes, it was all about offense or defense. And, um, and it was pretty fun. Games can create dialogue. 
games can create learning, games can create optimization. You learn which is the best strategy given what you have and what may come your way. Games can create ice breaking. It builds an atmosphere of shared experience, which is just so much fun, and as such, it enables people to have a serious time exploring plausible futures. Have you heard the storm warning? Oh no, I don't know what you're saying. What are you saying? <laughs> In this board game, teams make decisions about building infrastructure to protect their town against flooding. Most groups opt for the least expensive investment. This saves money in the short term, but has serious long-term consequences. All of your low-income housing is lost. One of the great things about games to elicit learning and dialogue is that games are systems of rules. But when people make decisions in the game, they see emerging in their own decisions or in the rest of the team aspects of human behavior that are intrinsically who we are. There can be selfishness, there can be generosity, there can be just a sheer paralysis because of confusion, there can be conflict because what you care about is not what someone else cares about. Someone who has a very stupid idea but is very assertive or very compelling may convince an entire village to do the wrong thing. The good thing about games is that you can play repeatedly. Next time they will listen to the shy, intelligent person. Collaboration may be more likely to happen when you have fewer resources and you have to talk to people. And then once you get a lot of your own resources, and it doesn't seem quite as important, that communication seems to break down a little bit. It's very hard to think about things that don't exist around us right now. I mean, climate change is happening, but the effects aren't being felt. So it's just a very experiential way of getting them to, to be there and to feel that and to immerse them in that in a way that it may then actually feel more like, oh, I really need to think about this today. We are in this event and in my professional work focusing on climate risks. Any system that is complex, that has thresholds, that has trade-offs between the now and the later, between the me and the us, between the individual and the collective, these trade-offs can be captured in games. You have scarcity, you have to make decisions. What will you do? There will be consequences. That was, I think, one of the most interesting things about the game, uh, bringing people together and really not requiring, but strongly encouraging them to come up with some sort of group plan and the rules were nicely flexible. After a long day with two more games about drought insurance and ecosystem services, the BU players are still deeply engaged. They're wrestling with the hard choices that farmers, aid workers, government officials, and international donors make each time they decide what crop to plant, which program to fund, or what policy to promote. But by the end, we had legislated that um, each quadrant had to be emission neutral. Along the way, they are learning and laughing their way to a new understanding of just how hard it is to make decisions today when tomorrow is uncertain.